chiamo Edoardo Cuoco, segretariato di Technology Platform Organics e eh, il titolo del suo intervento è Alleanze strategiche per rafforzare le zone rurali, l'approccio dei biodistretti. Grazie. Grazie a voi, buon pomeriggio. Uh, good afternoon everybody. I decided to give my presentation in English today because I would like to be local as well. So I will give it in English but with a very strong Neapolitan accent so that we also have the local component with us. So just a few words. I'm representing here the European Technology Platform Organics. It is um, one of the 40 European Technology Platform. I mean, European Technology Platform is a strategy of the European Commission to involve stakeholders in, in decision-making, in policy decision-making. I'm representing the one working on agroecology and organic farming food system. As platform, we take a very serious system approach to agriculture and food chain, and we have a very strong engagement of civil society. We started our work in 2008. We have been recognized by the Commission in 2015, and we are strongly fighting to have better funding and better recognition of research and innovation coming from the organic sector. So, here you can see in this slide, I try to summarize our membership. As you can see, we have business representative, mainly we are talking about farmer association like the IFOM EU, which is the movement, which is the umbrella organization of the movement of organic farming, uh, Via Campesina, and uh, other, many other organizations uh, putting together farmers, as well as small medium enterprise. As I said, we have a very strong um, involvement of civil society, from consumers to environmental organizations and so on. We have network of scientists and educational. We have international cooperation. Just a few weeks ago in Expo, we signed an agreement with the Brazilian government in order to promote agroecology and organic farming in Brazil. And we are also developing national mirrors that are supposed to do the job we do at European level locally. We have one in the Netherlands, one in Italy, one in Spain, one in Belgium, one in Czech Republic, and one in Sweden. I won't spend too much time about my organization. It's not the topic of my presentation. I just wanted to let you know that this group of stakeholders is together because together we are lobbying, we are advocating for more innovation in organic farming. And our understanding of innovation is quite broad. We do not believe that innovation is only technological, as someone does. But we believe that, of course, technological innovation is important. It's important also for our farmers. But it's also important know-how innovation, the tacit knowledge that is inside the farms, inside our, um, our stakeholder. And we also think that innovation can be a different business model, can be a different organization of our uh, stakeholders and that innovation can be social, a change behavior in groups, uh, trying to establish new relations. So I'm going to talk now about some things that fits, especially in the last three kind of innovation. So I'm not going to talk about technology, but I'm going to talk about alliances between stakeholders. And uh, I will tell you about biodistrict. I mean, biodistrict is an approach that has as born in this region, in Cilento. So we are going to talk about an area that is 200 kilometers southern than Naples, and is where this approach has born, but now this approach is it's popping up everywhere in Europe and outside Europe. So basically a biodistrict, as the words say, is a district, so it's a geographical area, where bio stands for organic, where organic farming is the core of the business model. And it's based on a strong alliance between farmer, citizen, local authorities, touristic operator, and civil society. Uh, the objective of the district is to improve the quality of life in rural areas, to improve a strength relation between rural and urban areas, to increase job opportunity through what we call an added local value, where local is the, the word. Of course, Biodistrict also uh, aim to um, protect and enhance the local natural, historical, and cultural resources of an area, to promote social innovation and sustainable development, as well as to contribute to the creation of per permanent work of multi-actor interested in sustainable development. 
if you looked at our, uh, my slide about our members, uh, you might have recognized the logo that now you have in your top left. It's the logo of the International Network of Ecoregion. It's a network that was established, if I'm not wrong, uh, a couple of years ago. And here we have the president, so if you have a question about the, the network, the president is here in the audience with us. And this network is associating different biodiversity experience in, uh, in Europe, especially in Italy, France, Austria, Portugal, Switzerland, Slovakia, Republic, Hungary, and Albania. Uh, I will tell more about the, um, the Italian situation, particularly the Cilento SA. In Italy, we have at the moment 11 biodistricts well developed and three that are going to be developed in the next months, years. And we zoom in the, the, Tuscan, the, the Campania region now with the area of Cilento. I mean, Cilento, as I said, is southern of Naples, about 200 kilometers. It's a very um, interesting area. It's an area that has, during winter, about 200,000 inhabitants. During summer, more than a million. It's a very touristical area. And um, this biodistrict is very, very particular because it comes, I mean, it takes from the coastal area to the internal area, so it's facing different problems of, of, uh, of our organic farmers. So, um, Biodistrict Cilento uh, consists out of 32 municipalities for an area of about 3,000 kilometers square. It's, the area is inside a national park of the Cilento Valle di Biano El Burni. Inside this area, we have three um, sites of international importance, archaeological site, Festum, Padula, and Elea Velia. It's the area where Ansel Keys has codified the Mediterranean diet, so also on the agroecological profile has very high relevance. As a very diversified agriculture, and as this ag diversified agriculture produces a very broad variety of quality products. We are talking about 16 recognized traditional products in the area, and all these products uh, have also production in organic. And uh, we count out 450 farms for about 2,300 hectares in this area in organic farming. I'm sorry because I mean, the format of this presentation was in office, and yeah, there is open office, so I cannot show all the picture we selected for you. It doesn't work. Anyway, I'll give you a little bit of a history and development of the, of the, of the um, biodistrict Cilento. Um, Biodistrict Cilento was the first biodistrict in Italy and was really relevant because it was really bottom-up approach. I mean, Biodistrict Cilento doesn't come from a uh, um, political push, doesn't come from local authorities, but comes from a farmer association. Farmers met together and decided they needed a change. As uh, Laure Florence um, told before me, these farmers understood that they needed a collective impact. I mean, be isolated didn't help them to develop their area, so they decided to get together. So in 2004, there was the first meeting of the local actors. And, uh, yeah. I think that doesn't work. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that's the way I will show it. I mean, from 2004 to 2009, there were many, many meetings with the local actors, local farmers, together with local authorities, touristic operators, and many other actors who were interested in this approach to develop the area. Until when, in 2009, um, with a lot of efforts from the, especially from the Italian Association for Organic Farming, Campania region, it was managed that the, this region, Campania region, it should allow to recognize this district. So now it's currently recognized by our law. And in 2011, all these actors put together their efforts in uh, one new association called Biodistrict Cilento, which is now managing all the activities of the district. Okay, let's try again. Anyway, it doesn't work, but we can go ahead. <coughs> I mean, they, this, the district is very, very active, so I will not go into details of all the action they do. I mean, what is interesting that in 2015, 
this approach was recognized by the FL, in particular by the IDEAS program, that is the Development South South, as one of the best social innovation to develop rural areas and internal areas. And it then started the idea of the International Network for Biodistrict. So after this recognition, Cilento and the actors of Cilento decided that their experience was worth to be disseminated elsewhere. So they were the promoted of an international network and they started to build alliances with other similar uh, approach, especially in France where there is a Biovalle, which is very active as well. So through this combination and this um, cooperation was born this international network. And uh, also market-wise, the experience by Distrito Cilento was very interesting. Uh, it even promoted the idea of having a national brand for products coming from the different districts in Italy. And in this case, the Italian Association for Organic Farming helped to develop a national brand that helps farmers from the different districts to get to the market. So maybe we can go back to the full screen machine. Yeah. So I prepared this, uh, let's say, handmade stakeholder map of the Bar District Cilento. In the, in the blue circle, you find all the actors who are currently in the association of our district Cilento, so the association managing all the activities. We have uh, 32 municipalities, we have organic producers, we have uh, logistic companies, we have a um, uh, community who wants to support this agriculture, we have farmer associations, biodynamic association, we have the association of Mediterranean diet, and we have also a labor union for farmers. I mean, all these stakeholders are together in this as association and they have relation with other local authorities, such as the national park, the Campania region, with uh, funding, technical assistance, advising, extension services for the farms in this area. We have the Ministry of Economy, which has taken this, um, this approach for, uh, as one of the approaches to develop internal areas. So it's funding uh, the bio district in order to develop internal area. We have the Ministry of Agriculture with funding research for uh, biodistrict in order to analyze the socioeconomic impact of this biodistrict for farmers and for the community. And then there are also relations with uh, other authorities who are not in charge of agriculture but for example are in charge of a uh, touristic um, policy because the idea is that the biodistrict is also to promote um, tourists to buy products not only during summer because the problem is that a lot of tourists goes there during summer they buy products but it's for two months then afterwards the Chilento is forgotten so one of the aim of the Chilento biodistrict is also this one to make sure that the people who is going to visit the land is just not just using their land but is also giving some benefit to what they do yeah. I'm sorry for the black spots yes and I will be very fast. I mean, the presentation will be on the, on the website, so you can go in deep. Uh, here there is um, a chart of how the supply chain of the biodistrict is organized. What is interesting that 75% of the organic production of the district stays in the district to direct selling. And, um, and then there, is, um, there are all the other issues. But tourists, they represent 55% of the people buying the products of the bio district. 40% it's people from the area of the district, 5% is for export. So what result, briefly? Um, bio district aimed and promoted green public procurement and sustainable practice among, among public authorities. It favorite the conversion of organic lands to organic. It favorite the um, organic menu in schools and hospitals preserved the landscape and the foodscape, as someone said this morning. Biodistrict also helped to uh, promote social farming and create new jobs, and new jobs also for uh, um, people with social needs. And is something that we call a living workshop, where people can go and understand how the, the organic district works, but also how the farmer of the organic district are working together. There is a project from the Italian Minister of Agriculture who assessed that on average, Organic farming in the district got a turnover grow of 20%. Uh, 
I mean, in the presentation, you will find also a breakdown of the figures that now doesn't come because of the different system. Um, the development of short supply chain was really intensive. We also created fair trade groups, but let's say local fair trade groups, so to buy local products fairly. Organization of bazaar, organization of uh, um, organic local menu in restaurants, dress up catering, and also initiative on the agronomic side to save uh, ancient local varieties and to simplify, to test simplified way of certify organic farming. Conclusion, I hope I'm in time. And um, so we say that biodiesel promotes rural renaissance. It gives land access to young farmers, gives land access to farmers who want to produce organically. It made possible to have fairer relation in the supply chain by establishing direct relation between the farmers, the consumers, and the logistic part of the chain. We gave possibility to people to uh, they see, decide themselves what to produce and how to produce it. So to get out of the classical food system scheme, capitalist, let's say, but we want them to produce what they want to produce in the way that they like to produce, in this case, organic. We managed to increase touristic flow, also because of a very strong coordination between the municipalities. We tested simplified organic certification system. One of those is going to be in the new regulation for organic farming that is going to be issued by European Commission in three months. And of course, we, as I said, Biodistic also try to promote um, social aspect of agriculture by including people with social needs in the farming jobs and also have to solve some agricultural problem like mixed farming. So being together, the, the farmers manage to um, also to face agronomical challenges. I will not, I will stop now here. I thank you all for your attention and you can contact me for further questions. Thank you.